Pig Town. Extra, extra hero all about the angel of the street. Tonight's Big Town story, Extra. <laughs> Big Town, the headline stories of a great city dramatically reported by Steve Wilson, fighting managing editor whose creed, as with all great newsmen, is emblazoned on the masthead of the illustrated press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, that it may be a faithful servant of all the people, use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now to Big Town and to Steve Wilson's heartwarming story of The Angel of the Street. In Big Town, as in all great cities, all but lost amid the brassy clamor of its life, there walk in silence and in suffering angels of the street. And this is the simple story of but one, a flower seller in the theatrical section of Big Town. It began one chilly autumn evening as an elderly woman known as Violet stood shivering in the doorway, waiting for a young man to come out of a swank apartment house. Johnny. Johnny Nolan, wait. What the... Oh, hello, Violet. Rotten night to be peddling posies. Why don't you go home? I've never missed an opening night in 20 years, Johnny. I produce the friends that think it was bad luck if I wasn't around selling my Violet. (laughs) They ought to put you in a payroll, Violet. You ought to shake them down for plenty. But Johnny, don't talk like that. You didn't choose to talk like that before you quit night school and started running around with that no-good chick Larson. Don't you worry about me, Violet. I'm learning the angles. Pretty soon, I'll be buying your violets. For luck. Don't, Johnny. All the violets in the world won't bring you the kind of luck you'll need if you take up with Chick Larson and his racket crowd. What do I got to lose? A punk out of an orphanage at some slug left ten bucks a week instead of a name? I wish I knew who he was. I'd shake him down till his teeth fell out. Oh, no, you wouldn't, Johnny. You ain't that kind. You've been listening to that scum of the earth, Chick Larson. What do you care, Violet? What did playing it straight ever get you? Oh, Johnny, Johnny. Go on. Peddle your posies. One of these days, I'll buy you that farm you're always talking about, where you can raise your own violets. Not with that kind of money, Johnny. I'd rather die in the gutter of Big Town. I'd rather die... Cut it out, Violet. You've been a pal, and you helped me out. You steered me into my first job when I got out of the orphanage. But I ain't gonna go on being pushed around for the rest of my life. Don't do it, Johnny. If it's money you need to get started on something, I've got a little save. No. I'm sorry, Violet, you... You've done too much for me already. Now, leave me alone. Good night. I gotta stop him. I gotta stop him. I gotta make Chick Glass and leave him alone. Leave Johnny alone. He ain't their kind... They'll use them, drag them down and... I... Yeah? Oh, hi, Violet. What do you want? I... I want to see Chick Lass. Who is it, Lola, baby? <laughs> There's a lady to see you, Chick. Yeah? What's she want? <laughs> Very funny. Go on, mix some <laughs> drinks or I'll smack your teeth for a real laugh. Oh, cut it out, Chick. Where's your sense of humor? I haven't any. I just got a thirst. Mix me a drink to get the taste of this posy pusher out of my mind, will you? All right, Violet, how did you get up here? Up the service stairs. I knew the elevator kid would never bring me up the front way. And how he wouldn't. Well, what do you want? I want you to leave Johnny Nolan alone. Nolan? Yes. It's my deal with him got to do with you. You're trying to ring him into your dirty rackets. Well, what's it to you? None of your business. But you ain't going to mix him up in your crooked deals. You ain't going to get him in trouble. Get him sent to jail, you ain't. No, huh? Come over here to the head of the stairs. You let go of me. Quit. Pushing me Shut up and glasses. listen, you rummy old posy peddler. Pushing dopes oh, around is my racket. I don't care what you do to me. Who do you leave Johnny Nolan alone? Well, it's good you don't care what I'm going to do to you. Because I'm going to learn you to mind your own business. Let go of me. Let me go. Sure. I'm even going to help you go. You sneaked up the back stairs, so I'm going to help you down the same I way. Don't... Steve, 
You got a minute? Sure thing, Lorelai. Come in. Come on in, Violet. Thank you, Mr. Kubel. Hello, Violet. What are you... Good grief. What's happened to you? How did you get your face cut up like that? Oh, it, it don't matter about me, Mr. Wilson. I... Oh. Wait a minute, Violet. Here, let me take your flower basket. What's the matter with your side? You keep clutching it. Have you been hit by a car? No, no. I, I'll be all right. It's Johnny Nolan. I want you to help. Johnny Nolan? Yes. The boy you befriended ever since he got out of an orphanage? Yes. He's going to get in trouble, Mr. Wilson. He's bitter. They've been lying to him. Making him bitter. Trying to mix him up in that dirty racket. Who's trying to mix Johnny in a racket, Violet? Chick Larson. Chick Larson. Steve, isn't he the West Coast character who's supposed to be moving in on the Midtown Cafe operators? Yes, but so far, the racket squad's having a thing on him, Lorelai. He's trying to get Johnny to handle his books. Johnny's good at figures. He was going to be in a... a, a well, Johnny's troubles can wait, Violet. You're hurt. Call a doctor, Lorelai. No, no, I, I, I'll be all right. Violet, let me touch your side. I've had first aid training. No, it don't matter, Miss Kilburn. What happened, Violet? How did you get bruised and cut up like this? Well, I, I tried to make him leave Johnny alone. He pushed me down the service stairs. Who pushed you downstairs, Violet? Chick Lars. Larson? Oh, Steve, I'm almost certain two of her ribs are broken. There may be internal bleeding. Get on the phone, Lyle. No. I call for an ambulance. Get her to city no, hospital. No, please, please, Mr. Wilson. I, I, I've got to keep them from dragging Johnny down in the gutter. Now, you've done more than your part, Violet. Please find Johnny, Mr. Wilson. Now, don't worry, Violet. I'll find Johnny Nolan and Chick Larson and take it from there. <laughs> All right, see you once what, Lola? What's the matter, Chick? Pushing that poor old dame downstairs way out so much you can't make it to the door? No, baby. And I told you to quit lipping me for less. Cokey. Yeah? Yeah, Chick? See you once. Remember, that posy peddler ain't been around. We ain't seen her. Sure, Chick. We've just been playing gin rummy like gin. And that goes for you, too, oh. Lola, baby. Quit twisting my arm, Chick. I don't have to take You'll it. You'll take what I hand out. I want to see Chick Larson. Hold it, fella. Maybe he don't want to see you. Uh, he'll talk to me or the police. Oh, yeah? Who says so? Take it easy, Cokie. Invite the gent. Okay, Chick. Come on in, mister. Thanks. So you're Chick Larson? So I've been told. Who are you I got to talk to? The police may want to ask you a few questions, whether you talk to me or not. Yeah, what's the beef? At the moment, it's a simple matter of assault. But... If your victim dies, it'll be murder. Murder? Chick, you Shut can... up. Go make some drinks, baby. I want to hear this guy talk. Want, want me to frisk him for heat, Chick? Put that goon boy on a leash, Larson. Yeah, go cheat yourself a game of solitaire, Cokie. This guy kind of interests me. Okay. But if he gets fun... All right, big boy. It's a since you ain't a copper, so where do you fit? We'll get to that. Where's Johnny Nolan? Nolan? What do you want him for? Someone who loves him very much is badly hurt and is asking for him. The flower woman you shoved down a flight of stairs. <laughs> Prove it, fella. I get two witnesses that'll say she wasn't And I here. have proof she was here. What kind? This bunch of violets outside your door, crushed underfoot when you shoved her toward the service stairs. That ain't proof of nothing. Anyway, what's it to you? Just this, Larson. You picked the wrong person to shove down those stairs, just a poor old flower seller, but a woman known to the as the angel of the street. A woman with a thousand friends from the biggest big shot to the lowest moocher. And if she dies, your life won't be worth a nickel in this town. <laughs> you scare me, fella. Where's Johnny Nolan? Never heard of the punk. Where's Nolan? Try the phone book. Listen, Larson. That poor woman may be dying because she doesn't want to live to see Johnny Nolan teamed up with you. You're breaking my heart. All right, Larson. You've had your chance. I'll find Nolan another way and leave you to my friend, Inspector Callahan of Homicide. Check. He ain't gonna let that monkey talk like that and walk out of here. Let me take him. Not here, Cokie. Put that sticker away. Yes, Cokie. What? And next time you pull a knife, don't rattle before you strike. <laughs> Thus, Steve, although failing to get a line on Johnny Nolan, has stirred up a deadly hornet's nest that will lead to exciting developments. 
And in a moment, we'll continue with tonight's story, The Angel of the Street. Now, back to Big Town and Steve Wilson's headline story of The Angel of the Street. Investigating a brutal assault on Violet, a beloved flower vendor of the theatrical section of Big Town, Steve Wilson is trying to locate Johnny Nolan, an orphan the old woman had befriended since childhood. Now, following a clash with a racketeer responsible for Violet's injuries and who knows Johnny Nolan's whereabouts, Steve and Harry the Hack are watching the gangsters hang up. Say, boss. Say it, Harry. Look, keep your eye peeled on that side exit to Larson's building while I watch the front shack, boss. Now, the hunch the rats are going to scatter. I'm hoping they'll lead us to Johnny Nolan. Hey, boss, that's a press car that just pulled up behind my hack. Yeah, it's the law line. She must have hightailed straight here from the hospital. Hey, what gives her vile, Miss Kelbine? pretty serious, Harry. Internal hemorrhage. She keeps asking for Johnny Nolan. Have you located him, Steve? No, he's not at his flat, and no one seems to know where he hangs on. Well, what about Chick Larson? Well, Larson isn't talking, but I threw the hook into him. And I'm hoping he'll lead us to Nolan. Boss, a dame just come out of the side exodus and she's coming this way. Yeah, in a hurry. And looking behind her as if she's afraid she's being followed. That's the girl who was in Larson's apartment. She's crossing the street, heading toward the avenue. You want me to follow her, Steve? Yes, Lord, I follow her, but watch her step. I don't know how deeply she's involved in Larson's setup. I'll be careful, Steve, and I can do better without the press car. I'll leave it here. Harry and I may have to split up if Larson and his hop-headed stooge come out. I'll get going, my lovely. She may grab a cab on the corner. She won't shake me. I'll phone Fletch on city desk and leave a message the minute she likes. What a gal, boss. Yes. If only she wasn't so reckless. Careless of her own safety. Boss, if you will excuse the personalities, them that live in glass hothouses should not throw shoes which fit. Well, maybe you're right, Harry. I don't set a very good example, but... Uh, oh, oh, heads up, Harry. Get under the wheel of your hack. Larson's on the move. Is that him under the canopy with the skinny character healing like a bird do- Hey, it looks like they're looking for a hack. Yes, pull out, Harry. Cruise pass. Pick them up if you can. Take them wherever they want to go. Check, boss. And whilst why you will be doing what? I'll be in the press car, Harry. Glued to your tail. Now get going. Let's go. I gotta warn John. There's no telling what Chick will do. Yeah. Oh, Johnny, it's me, Lola. I was hoping you'd be with Sam. Yeah. Oh, what's the matter, Lola? It's Chick, Johnny. Something happened after you left. Something you ought to know about. Has he been slamming you around again, Lola? Oh, no more than usual. But you're mixed up in this, Johnny. How how do you mean? Well, I don't want to tell you over the phone. Can you come over here to my place quick? Yeah, okay, Lola. I I can be there in five minutes. Make it quick, Johnny. Make it quick. Chick. Maybe he followed me. I sent Cokie. Yeah? Yeah, who is it? Miss Lynn. Miss Lynn? Oh. Must be the girl across the hall. Just... Oh. Oh, you're not... No, I'm not whoever you're expecting, but I want to talk to you just a second. Say, who are you? What's the idea of pushing your way into my apartment? To get a straight answer to a simple question. Where's Johnny Nolan? What do you want to know? Who are you? Well, it isn't important, but I happen to be a newspaper reporter. A reporter? Yes, I'm Lorelai Kilburn of the Illustrated Press. What do you want with Johnny? He wasn't there. Wasn't where? At Chick Larson's place when that poor flower seller was pushed down a flight of stairs? Say, how do you know so much? We know plenty, but we don't know where to find Johnny Nolan, and you're going to tell me or you'll tell it to Homicide at police headquarters. Homicide? Is Violet dead? No, but she's in a very bad way. Well, why do you want Johnny Nolan? He wasn't there. He left before it happened. Because Violet wants to see him. She doesn't want to live if he's going to get mixed up in Chick Larson's rotten rackets. Is that the only reason? Don't lie to me, Kilburn. Johnny don't give a hoop about me, but I happen to like him. Then where is he? He's coming here. Hiya, Lola. Chick. Yeah, Chick. How come you took a powder when I told you to go mix me a drink? I'm through, Chick. You mix me in more than enough. Nobody walks out on me, baby. Who's your snazzy girlfriend? Just a friend, Mr. Larson. What do you use for a name, beautiful? Thanks for the compliment. Just call me Susie Q. (laughs) Just be beautiful, baby. Don't strain a brain let me for laughs, kid. I'll try to remember that. You do that. 
Would you have me down your phone number while I settle with Lola, man? I'm getting out of town, chick. Sure, Cokie's picking up a car to take you. Cokie? I wouldn't go to the corner with Cokie. You'll go, baby. Get your hat. <laughs> Tam always feels better with her hat on, no matter what happens. I won't go. Get your hat, Lola. Let me talk to Chicky boy. You keep out of this, plenty of plenty. Chick, that's Johnny, but don't get this wrong. Clam up. So you phone a Johnny punk, huh? I figured you dumb enough to do that. Johnny ain't crossed. You ain't made a play for me. Get in the bedroom, both of you. Now, wait a minute, Larson, before you start waving that gun in your shoulder. Get in there, both of you. I'll tend to this. Come on in, Johnny boy. The door ain't locked. Oh, what's up, Chick? Where's Lola? Shut the door, Johnny. Oh, wait a minute, Lola. What? Hello again, Larson. Mr. Wilson, what are you doing here? Wilson, the racket buster newsie, so that's who you are. Yes, Larson. And thanks for leading me to Nolan. So you tailed me, huh? A blind man could have trailed you here. You got nothing on me, Wilson? Nothing but an assault rap so far. But pull that ego crutch in the shoulder holster bulging your tux, and you'll buy yourself a one-way ticket to the chair. What's happened, Mr. Wilson? It's very simple, it? Johnny. This would-be boss of yours has nearly killed the best friend you'll ever have. Who? Who are you talking about? The woman who's looked after you since you were a kid in an orphanage. Violet? Yes. What's happened to her? She's in general hospital because she tried to keep this rat from ringing you into his filthy rackets. How bad, Mr. Wilson? How bad is it? Bad enough she may die because she doesn't want to live to see you hauled down in the gutter with his snipe. Larson, you rat. You dirty, stinking rat. No, hold Larson, it. hold it, Johnny. Larson will keep... You're needed at General Hospital to tell Violet you're not going to team up with Larson or any other racket. I'll, I'll go, Mr. Wilson, but first let me show this. No, no, no. Gun. Don't be a fool. Please. Please. Yes, don't either one of you be dopes. Get away from that door, Larson. Give me an argument. We're going to General Hospital to give a woman the will to fight for her life. You ain't going out of here and sicking the cops on me. Let go of me, Mr. Wilson. I'll take that gun away from him and break every bone in his body. No, but... no, no, Johnny. He's a cornered rat and he'd tear you apart. Yes, and the same goes double for you, Wilson. So lead that hero over to the bedroom door over there and I'll let you guys join a couple of snazzy dames. Mr. Wilson, he must have Lola Lynn locked in there. She phoned me from here five minutes ago. Yes, and apparently one of my top crime reporters, Lola Lai Kilburn. So the other dame was a reporter, huh? Well, that settles it. And I'll settle you. Oh. Look out, Johnny. Nice going, but let me get this gun out of his hand. Take it and let me finish him. Oh. Now, that's enough, Johnny. That'll hold him. Now, let the law settle the rest of the score, Johnny. If Violet dies... I'll kill him. So help me, I'll kill him. No, 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 Johnny. No, no. The law will take care of him, Johnny. Now, come on. Let's get the law. I'm Miss Lynn out of that room. Dear. Dear. Yes, Royal I. Just a minute, my lovely. Uh, did you take Larson? As Johnny jumped in and held him while I pulled the snake's fangs. He's over there on the floor. Oh. Is Lola okay, Miss Kilburn? Yes, Johnny. I didn't have anything to do with hurting Violet. Johnny, I couldn't stop sure, it. Sure, kid. I ain't blaming you. Even for getting mixed up with Larson, I almost did. But what about Violet? How bad is she? When can I see her? As soon as we can get you to the hospital, Johnny. She's asking for you. She's afraid you're going to the rackets and doesn't want to live if you do. She won't have to worry about that. Okay, Johnny. Give me a hand with Larson and we'll turn him over to the police on the way to the hospital. What about Cokie, Mr. Wilson? He's coming here to get me. I think Cokie will be well taken care of. Think again, Wilson. Oh, Cokie. How? If it isn't the knife boy to the rescue. Yeah, Wilson. Only this time I got me a gun and try taking it and I'll rip you open where you'll spill all over the joint. I uh, won't have to take it away from you, Cokie. Come on, Wilson, try it. I got a personal score to settle with you. Include me, Cokie. Keep out of this, Johnny. You're needed at General Hospital, but not as a patient. You slugs ain't going nowhere till you snap Chick out of dreamland till he tells me what to do with you. Go on, Johnny, work on Chick. Get him on his feet. Go ahead, Johnny. Leave Cokie to me. Yeah, come on, Wilson. Try taking this rod like you did my knife, and I'll pour it into you till you fall apart. Thus, Steve faces a tricky and dangerous situation, and in a moment we'll come to the exciting climax of tonight's story...
back to Big Town and tonight's heartwarming story of The Angel of the Street. And to Steve Wilson as he faces a hop-headed gunsel by the name of Cokie. Come on, Wilson. Try to take this rod like you took my knife. Don't try it, Steve. He's needle-happy. Don't worry, Lorelei. It won't be necessary. It's all arranged. Cokie is going to be taken care of in just a moment. Are you going to pull it, Wilson? Come on, make a move. I'll even take my finger off of the trigger of this gun, give you a sporting chance to rush me. Come on, Wilson. I bet you six slugs to one punch. Come on, come on. All right, now, Harry. Check, boss. Thanks, Harry. Pick up his gun. Oh, that was beautiful, Harry. Thanks from all of us. Oh, think nothing of him, Miss Kilpine. Steve, did you know for certain Harry was standing right behind Koki outside that door? Yes, well, I I didn't see Harry, but I saw a hand holding his upholstered monkey wrench, and that was enough. Yeah, and if there was anything else, I will be glad to oblige no Blessley. Just phone the police, Harry, and watch these goon boys until they get here. What pleasure, boss. What about me, Mr. Wilson? I know I should have helped you. Should have gone to the police. Stay here, Miss Lynn. Tell the police a straight story, and they'll give you every break they can. Come on, Lorelai, Johnny. Let's see if we can give poor Violet a break. Oh, Oh, Johnny. Johnny, you came. Yeah, yeah, Violet. Yeah, I got here thanks to Mr. Wilson. And don't you worry about me getting into the rackets. Oh, don't do it, Johnny. Don't hook up with Larson or you'll end up dead in the gutter like... like your father. My my father? You knew my old man? Yes, Johnny. He wasn't bad. Just stubborn like you. He wanted to get rich quick and got mixed up with a rum gang and they killed him when he tried to pull out. Well, then, it wasn't him that left enough dough for me to go to high school after I got out of the orphanage. Oh, yes. Yes, Johnny. He didn't want you to go his way. End up in the gutter, in the street, like me. Oh, wait a minute, Violin. Yes, don't worry about Johnny, Violin. Oh, oh, Mr. Wilson, Miss Kilbourne, I didn't see you there standing at the foot of my bed. Thank you for helping, Johnny. Well, we haven't been able to do a thing but bring you two together. But now the doctors say you're going to be all right. How about giving Johnny a chance to thank the one person to whom he owes everything? No. No, Mr. Wilson. Let it stay like it's been. What is it, Violet? What are you and Mr. Wilson talking about? Tell him, Violet. Johnny has a right to know. No, Mr. Wilson. He'd be so ashamed. Not if he's worth all you've done for him through all the years. No. He has a right to know his mother. Oh, no. My no, mother. Please. Violet, you're my mother. Oh, Johnny, I... I'm sorry. I'm... I'm just a poor old broken down flower scent. Sorry. I'm the one that ought to be sorry. Why didn't I get it? See it all the times you helped me out. I'm sorry, Johnny. I'm so sorry. Now, don't talk like that, Violet, because I'm the proudest guy in the world. Oh, Johnny. The proudest, my the boy. luckiest guy in the world. Oh, my boy. My son. My son. All right. Let's go out in the hall. Yes, Steve. They don't need us in here. Steve. How long have you known Violet's secret? I wasn't sure until tonight, Lorna. Oh, you want me to phone Fletch on City Desk and give him the story? Only part of it, Lorna. Unfortunately, happiness doesn't make headlines in this hard-boiled town. Yeah. Well, what part of it do I feed rewrite, Steve, and our readers at the Illustrated Press? Just the fact that Larson and Cokey are going up the river for assaulting a flower seller by the name of Violet Nolan. Alias... The Angel of the Street. And so ended in a happy reunion of mother and the prodigal son. Another big town adventure of Steve Wilson and Lorelei of the Illustrated Press. (laughs) 
In tonight's dramatization of Big Town, all names, times, and places are fictional. And any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilborn, and was written and directed by Jerry McGill. And now, Big Town bids you good night until next you hear the newsboy calling. Extra, extra hero, all about it. The story of Steve Wilson and Big Town. Extra, extra. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.